Hi, it's vegan personal trainer and nutritionist Paul from Hench Herbivore with another muscle building Q&A. Sam Michael asks, are you 100% natural or have you ever taken steroids? I was using steroids up until about seven years ago, um, at which time, all of a sudden, every time I took any of them, it just made me terribly sick. Uh, I tried all different compounds, for, um, injectables, then onto orals. Uh, whatever I took would basically F me up. Of course, when you add in lots of exogenous testosterone for years, your endogenous production ceases. Uh, and so when you come off, you know, your levels are gonna go through the floor and mine were crazy. It, it was uh, three on a scale of, I think in UK money, they say the healthy range is nine to about 27. Yeah, mine was um, non-existent. And you know, I was miserable. Like I had no sexual function. I was depressed. I was clinically depressed because I wasn't getting the testosterone, which makes you depressed. Hence grumpy old man syndrome as men tend to age. And my whole kind of persona, my self-esteem was based on being, being the biggest, scariest dude in the room. You know, which stemmed from insecurity from, you know, when I was a lad basically, which I hadn't dealt with. But then of course, like the younger dudes in the gym that I used to really dwarf, they started dwarfing me. And yeah, then my self-esteem might really crumble. So I was depressed because I wasn't the person who I wanted to be. And, you know, chemically I was depressed too. It was a really dark, horrible time that I wouldn't wish on anyone. I would just say to any younger men watching this, if you're thinking about jumping on steroids, you know, not only is there the physical risk, like, you know, they do harm you. Like there's not a, a healthy pursuit to put these chemicals in your body. Also, they change you. Like, they turn me into a nasty, violent, womanizing It's not good. It's no way to live. It's no way to treat others. And you will regret it. And while they're not physically addicting, the feeling you get from it is very addicting. And most people who start never stop. The only reason I stopped was that the pain of remaining the same became greater than the pain of changing. I just physically couldn't live like that. I was just so tired and just dizzy. Like they just messed with me. At the time, I wasn't very pleased about that. Now I'm so glad that it happened. Now, I was very lucky, although I felt very low for a very long time, eventually my testosterone has come back into a healthy range and like I'm well, fun I feel really good in life. I feel freaking amazing, actually. I've not heard of that before. Maybe it happens to a few rare individuals. Well, apparently it does. Um, but for pretty much everyone, once you get on tea, you come off, you're going to feel like shit for the rest of your life, basically. I do wonder whether I was lucky because of the quality of my diet now. There is science to show that testosterone is higher in vegans than non-vegans. Uh, I'm not gonna make that claim, however. What I am gonna say, though, is if you're a young man considering getting on steroids, don't. Don't be an insecure kid like I was. Frank asks, which supplements for growth and regeneration of muscles would you recommend? In my 33 years of training, I've tried them all. The only two that I think are worth looking at are a protein powder. You know, if you struggle to get adequate whole food sources of protein. Not that protein powders are magic, it's just that they're uh, in a convenient way of getting a good percentage of protein in your diet. Um, and creatine, this is shown to really work to boost your uh, volumizing muscles, gives you more kind of um, turgidity in the muscles. So you've got a lot more mechanical strength and it boosts your um, endurance as well. In my view, from my personal experience and from what I understand of the literature, all other supplements tend to pretty much do nothing at all or just very minimal things that you're not really going to notice uh, other than the big hole they, they leave in your wallet. If you want my recommendation for the best ones, I love the Viva Life's Perform Protein Powder. Their Vegan Protein Powder is also good. The Performance Vegan, but this one's just called uh, Vegan by name. And then the cre creatine's very good. Uh, Viva Life make a micronized creatine, which is more bioavailable, and I find that works much better for me. Wayne Moore asks, when and what to eat before and after training? A few rare individuals seem to do well with fasted training. For me and the vast majority of people, you're best to fuel your workout. Uh, but you don't want to eat any more than an hour and a half, two hours pre-workout, or you may well throw up. Historically, post-workout, you know, people used to talk a lot of bro science about using sugars. 
you know, to drive glycogen into, back into your muscles because you want to replenish your stores and you must get some aminos in quickly. So you use a whey shake or whatever. And then oh, you've got this sort of window of opportunity. You want to eat a solid meal within an hour. But, you know, in all honesty, I used to do all that guff. And now I just eat like some proper food, you know. I eat it close to when I finish the workout, but I don't think you need to worry too much about it in all honesty. I think it's more on the, you know, total of calories, total of protein throughout the day. I think that's uh, definitely the main thing. The other stuff there, I don't think it makes much odds in all honesty. There's not science to show it anyway. As for what to eat pre-workout and post-workout, it's the same answer I give if someone says, what's the best diet to prevent heart disease? to protect your brain, you know, to protect your liver. Whole foods, plant-based, high carb. You know, this is gonna give you lots of clean, lovely burning energy. Uh, you want a moderate amount of protein as well. And you want some like healthy fats. So legumes, whole grains, fruits, vegetables. These should be emphasized. Nuts and seeds, we should have, um, you know, a moderate amount of as well. Adding loads of herbs and spices for the antioxidants to help you recover. Yeah, best diet in the world for every occasion. If you're a larger strength or physique athlete or someone on a low amount of calories, perhaps doing a cut, the judicious use of a small amount of a more processed uh, plant protein food may be useful. So seitan, textured vegetable protein, tofu protein powders, uh, these are your friends. If you'd like to optimize your health, body shape or performance with a vegan diet, then please check out my new online nutrition course. I've launched it at a low introductory price. It contains 14 videos, three cookbooks, and masses of downloadable and printable PDFs, including a complete nutrition chart for all ages and stages of life, so you can be sure that the whole family is thriving. My IRL friend, Chris Coates, asks, my main problem is shoulders. No matter what I do, they are my weakest muscle group and my traps I always pick up the slack. Can't figure out how to isolate them and the best way to build them. So if you're feeling shoulder exercises in your traps, it's because you're elevating your shoulders. That's what your traps are responsible for. So the way to combat that is to keep your shoulders depressed throughout. So uh, shoulder press should look like this rather than like this. So side raise should be here rather than like that. As for how to train them, the most effective way would be to do your compound lifts first. So things like any types of shoulder presses, dumbbells, barbells, machines, whatever. I would emphasize wide grip, which targets the medial head to give width to the middle head, rather than doing too much in front, which it's the front anterior delts. Those get a lot of work from your heavy chest presses anyway. Uh, so that's not something I even include in my training. Arnie presses are good as well. They keep the kind of tension on the delts throughout. So they're kind of a, I don't know, like a two thirds movement with dumbbells. Sort of anterior, like onto the medial head and the triceps don't kind of take over at the top. So they're quite a nice one. So then I'd go on to isolation moves. So I mean, you could add a, a few sets of a front raise if you want to accentuate the, the front head more. Uh, more importantly would be, as I say, the side delts. So any, uh, side raise variations are good. Rear delts are really a different beast. You don't hit those with presses. They're involved in any um, in your kind of back work where you're rowing and things like that. So you can either tack them on the end of a back day or you can have like a specific shoulders day where you do your presses first. I would then move on to the rear delt work. And for rear delts, you need to keep your shoulders protracted. Normally we retract the shoulders for everything, but you want to protract and then you're fully shortening um, the rear delt without the whole shoulder moving, which, you know, so you think, oh, this is the proper range of motion. No, that's your shoulder joint is moving. Keep the shoulder joint isolated. This is a fully contracted rear delt muscle. So you've got machine rear delt flies, uh, dumbbell flies. You can use it like a cable as well. Derek Jansen asks, when looking to increase calories for a mass building phase on a whole foods plant-based diet, what tips do you have for minimizing GI issues? Usually the increase in calories comes with a significant increase in fiber as well. Great question. Some of the worst offenders for GI issues are legumes, particularly when you try to cram a whole load in it once. Uh, one thing is to really rinse these super well so you get rid of the hemicellulose, which can uh, add to these problems. 
Uh, also, leverage more lentils. Uh, relatively speaking, they're way up there. They're some of the most protein-rich legumes, um, but they're also lower in fiber than some legumes, so they're kind of more useful. I would cut down on your super low calorie fruits and vegetables. Obviously you want to include some like leafy greens, etc. but don't go overboard on those. And then where possible, say with fruits, if you use tropical fruits, they tend to be much more calorically dense than others. So look at the caloric density of your fruits and vegetables. Leverage more whole grains rather than tubers. Uh, for instance, white potatoes are found to be the most satiating food. They've certainly got more volume than grains. They also contain a protein called potato protease inhibitor 2, which is actually an appetite suppressant. Use more smoothies and blended soups. Although you are keeping the fiber, you're kind of pre-digesting it by churning it up somewhat in the blender. Uh, so that helps with digestion. You could up the percentage of fats in your diet. Of course, fat is nine calories per gram versus the four of protein in carbs. So that's a way to lower the total volume that you need. I would also consider using a couple of servings of a more processed vegan food. You're trying to eat whole foods plant-based, so I'm guessing you're health conscious, but it's difficult for some people to get the optimal amount of protein required to get their goals um, as such. It's up to you, it depends on your ideas of risk reward, like what you're happy to do. But for me, in the context of an otherwise whole foods plant-based diet, one or two servings of a quality protein powder, seitan, tofu, textured vegetable protein, I don't think it's gonna make much of a difference in terms of health outcome. We've not got the science to prove either way, um, but I think we can infer, you're still gonna do a lot better than people eating a standard American diet by about a million billion miles. If you've got a question about vegan fitness, pop it in the comments below. And just to let you know, guys, I've now opened up a premium coaching service where we will be working one-on-one. -on -one. We make you bespoke nutrition, workout plans, just handhold you, really walk you through it. There'll be weekly follow-up Zoom calls to get your feedback, keep you accountable, kick your ass if you need to kick up the ass if you've not been doing what I said. <laughs> um, well, in all honesty, we only want to take on people who are serious because we can only coach five or six people at any one time. I want to feel job satisfaction from seeing you thrive. If you're up for it, I want to be able to show to the world how well you did in say we do a three month training and you got from here to here while eating a healthy, kind, planet protective diet. So I don't want any time wasters. I just want serious people. If that's you, there's the application forms below. And if we think we may be a good fit, we'll, uh, organize a phone chat so we can uh, see how we get on. Until next time, guys, click this.